Good morning, everyone. A happy and a blessed Easter to all our parish members of Christ the King Catholic community, and to those who are not and who have checked in, if I might say that, if that's an appropriate word, to participate in our Easter Mass this morning. My name is Father Tim Pick. I am a parochial vicar for the six parishes of the community. Our presider this morning is the pastor, Father Tim Friedrichsen. His intention this morning is for Lois Grody. My intention this morning is for Leroy Vanami. And I guess I would be amiss if I didn't introduce the other participants of the Mass, though he's behind the screen, as we say. We have our Stephen Berger, our videographer, again, is with us. And our lector this morning is Cassie Wernemont with her, and she is joined by her husband, Bentley. Uh, Cassie was going to be a reader slash lector uh, for St. Bernard Parish here in Breda and was ready to be on the schedule and COVID-19 hit. So we are going to give her an opportunity to, if I might say, make her debut as proclaiming the Word of God today. Our opening hymn this morning is number 183, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Number 183. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, Alleluia. Suffer to redeem our loss. Alleluia. Hymns of praise, then let us sing. Alleluia. Unto Christ our heavenly King. Alleluia. Who endured the cross and grave, Alleluia. Sinners to redeem and save, Alleluia. As we gather on this Easter morning when we celebrate that Christ is risen, is risen indeed. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we celebrate Easter, we celebrate the great mercy of our God, who has won for us victory over sin and death through the great faithfulness of his only begotten Son, the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as we gather on Easter, we can put our faith and trust in this merciful God and open ourselves to his forgiving mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father where you intercede on our behalf. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. 
We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good in healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. God.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, He is mercy and yours forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This morning, I invite you to sing the Easter sequence with me. It's number 166. To the Paschal Victim, give Give thankful thankful praise. Christ Christ ever ever sinless, his sheep sheep now he saves. Death and life contended in dreadful strife. Death did not hold him, immortal his life. Alleluia, his triumph we sing. Christ is arisen, the victor, the king. Mary, speak, confessing what you have seen. Christ, tomb lies empty where once he had been. 
angels bright confirming, shroud laid aside. He goes to Galilee, he lives though he died. Alleluia, his triumph we sing. Christ is arisen, the victor, the king. Christians sing his glory with every breath. Sing of his kingdom, victorious or death. Jesus, grant us mercy, new life from heaven. Christ ever reigns, alleluia, amen. Alleluia, his triumph we sing. Christ is arisen, the victor, the King. <coughs> Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Well, again, to join Father Tim in his greeting and his wishes for all of you, happy Easter. We hope that this Easter season um, is full of great joy and um, that during this time as we still are sheltering in place or keeping physical distances that uh, we find ways to continue to grow in our faith and especially in this great faith of the resurrection this Easter season. As Father mentioned last night, we have now 50 days of Easter season, which I kind of like that we have, I think it's nice of the church to give us 40 days of penance in Lent, but 50 days of Easter. So that's, that's a pretty good bargain. So we'll, we'll go with that. We started this Easter triduum on Thursday night. Of course, this is 
not the Easter Triduum, Easter Sunday, but at that beginning I said that um, the church sort of plays some tricks on us. It's sort of like a good parent. You know, a good parent or a good teacher, for that matter, knows that the first thing that has to be done is to get the child's attention. If you're going to try to teach them something, try to get them to reflect on something, you've got to get their attention somehow. And um, sometimes that might be with just a little name, you know, call your child, pay attention. Or maybe it's a little bit of a joke, a little teaser, or maybe sometimes something that just makes it say what? What? Kids like, what? What are you talking about? Well, I think that's kind of what Holy Mother Church is doing with us, her children, in these liturgies, especially uh, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and now Easter morning. I mentioned on Holy Thursday that the thing that should make us go, what, is when we get together to celebrate the Last Supper, the, the institution of the Eucharist, the gospel reading we have doesn't have the Eucharist in it. It doesn't have Jesus take bread and wine and say the words, this is my body, this is my blood, take and eat, take and drink. That should make us say, what? And so we have instead John's gospel where Jesus washes feet and reminds us that the Eucharist that we receive gives us a mission unto service. On Good Friday, when we come together to celebrate and commemorate uh, our Lord's passion and death, uh, you know, it's hard not to feel great torment and sadness and, and empathy for our Lord and his suffering. But yet what the liturgy gives us is rather a Jesus in the Gospel of John who is sort of in control of it all. He's making the decisions. He's calling the shots. He, as I mentioned in the homily that day, he's not on trial. He puts Pilate on trial. He doesn't need help carrying the cross. And the liturgy itself doesn't take us into that deep sense of suffering, but rather to rejoice in the victory of the cross. So just when we sort of come with this you know, feeling of uh, you know, great passion for our Lord's passion, the church gives us the victorious Christ and his cross. And what? You know, that seems different than what I was expecting. And now here we are on Easter morning. Happy Easter, everyone. He is risen indeed, uh, but we don't see the risen Lord in the gospel. What? Like, now this might be the way the church plays a trick on us all and is saying to you, you should have gone to Easter Vigil the night before. If you want to see the risen Lord, get to the Easter Vigil. Because last night, read from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, not just one Mary, Mary Magdalene, but the other Mary as well, go back to the tomb early in the first day of the week. They have, see this angelic figure who opens the grave and enthrones himself up on a rock and gives them a message. Now, you go tell the disciples this message. So they leave there excited, but also fearful when we see the full glory of God, that creates a fear, an awe, a reverent fear, we could say, in us. And they head to the, to the disciples as messengers of what the messenger, the angel, it's what angel means, is messenger. So they are now messengers taking his message to the disciples. And then on the way there, they encounter the risen Lord. Last night, we saw the risen Lord with the two women. And he commissions them to go, that is, he sends them. So now they are no longer messengers. They are actually apostles sent. They are also not only messengers of a message they received, but they now are witnesses of the risen Lord. Now that's an Easter reading. But the church is again sort of asking us children to maybe turn our heads a little bit and what? Why on Easter Sunday do we have this story of an empty tomb? And no sight of the risen Lord. We have the wonderful reading in Acts, the apostles, and we'll have many of those throughout the Easter season when the apostles now 
full of the Holy Spirit and having the courage to preach the gospel out, preaching the gospel and bringing people to faith. And we will throughout the Easter season have other readings from the gospels where we'll see the risen Lord. But today, we start with Mary Magdalene at the empty tomb and we end with Mary Magdalene at the empty tomb. Still wondering where her Lord is. The other disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved, after he enters, after Peter goes in first, Peter leads the way, you could say, into the empty tomb, and they see that Mary's concern that Jesus has been stolen, that the grave has been robbed, is probably not the case because the cloths are still there. Now, we don't hear the characters in the story think of this, but you and I, readers of John's Gospel, and readers who just a few weeks ago heard the story of Lazarus, Lazarus can't help but think like, oh, this is different, isn't it? Lazarus came out of the tomb, still wrapped in his burial cloths, and still with a cloth over his face. So whatever happened here, Jesus didn't come out of the tomb bound. And no, as I put in the bulletin, and you can read, I'm not going to go through all I said in the bulletin, but uh, you can read there that no grave robber worth his salt would have taken the body but not taken these valuable linens and maybe anything that would have been contained in them that would be worth stealing. So Jesus has not been stolen. The other disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved, saw and believed. Now normally in John's Gospel, and many people think it is true here too, that the other disciple came to a deep faith that Jesus had raised from the dead. Well, <laughs> a couple points. If that were true, that's not news you keep to yourself. You share it. He doesn't share it. In fact, very soon, he and the other apostles are still going to be behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. They're, they're afraid that if people realize that they were with this Jesus whom they had taken to the Romans to be crucified, they might be next. So it's a reasonable fear. But it's not a fear that says they believe he's raised from the dead. So John has that little parenthesis. They didn't yet know the scriptures that he was to be raised from the dead. And the evangelist John may also be pointing to his own gospel. Unlike you and me, they don't have his gospel. They don't have the full story yet. But still, church, mother church, you could have given us a little bit more of this, this chapter when the risen Lord does appear, but no, we're there at the empty tomb. And we have 50 days to hear a lot of good news. But there's good news in this too. It's not easy news, but it's good news. Sometime a few days ago, Father Pick noted in one of his daily homilies, I think it was a daily homily, or maybe it was one of the Sunday homilies, uh, you know, the basic notion in, in the New Testament is if we want to go get to the resurrection, we have to go through the cross. We have to go through whatever is necessary to be faithful to the calling, the mission that God has given to us as his daughters and sons. Just as Jesus the only begotten Son of God, the eternal Word in the Gospel of John, had to be faithful to his mission, a mission as St. Paul has in that beautiful hymn in Philippians, even unto death, death on a cross. The most humiliating and painful death there was and a form of death that was only given to non-citizens and usually slaves. That was the faithfulness that he showed in order to then be exalted by the Father in the resurrection and then ultimately to be at his side enthroned in heaven. But today we have an empty tomb. But taking that point 
that if we want to get to the resurrection, we have to go through the cross. We have to take up our cross and follow our Lord. Or if you prefer Old Testament, if you want to get to the promised land, you've got to go through the wilderness. No other way. I am going to propose that today the message is, if you want to see the risen Lord in your life, you have to first go to the tomb. The empty tomb. The dark tomb in the dark. Because Mary goes while it is still dark. If we really want to see the risen Lord, then we have to get real with ourselves. We've had 40 days now to reflect on our Christian lives, our vocations, our calling. 40 days that we could do something to grow in our relationship with the Lord. 40 days maybe to identify some of those areas in our life which are still somewhat dark, that we haven't let the light of Christ really in on, that we haven't really turned over to our Lord, whom we believe can give us great power and can help us with our sinfulness, with our weaknesses, with our fears. With whatever is the tomb that is part of our lives, the grief of lost loved ones. the pain and sorrow and grief of our world changing. We don't, we're on very unsteady ground right now. It's a bit of a tomb. We're looking at it and we're like, ah, what do we do with this time, with this experience? Now we can deny that. I recommend chocolate sauce, but that's another issue. <laughs> Or we can have our chocolate sauce, but admit, admit honestly, it's dark and I need the Lord's help. When you and I go to pray, when you and I go to worship, when you and I just sort of sit and meditate on God, the last thing God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the last thing our risen Lord needs from you and me is to act as if everything is okay. Because there is a lot okay in our lives, but there are also a lot of pains or sorrows or darkness or struggles or sinfulness. There are tombs. And if we want to see the risen Lord in our lives more spectacular, more vibrantly, more so that we are changed and and uh, strengthen, then we have to, with Mary, go to the tomb, and then unlike Peter and the other disciple, stay there as long as it takes to see the risen Lord. That part of the story is for later in Easter. But that's what she does. And then she, like Mary Magdalene and the other Mary in Mar Matthew's Gospel, she will become a witness to the risen Lord like they were last night. But today, we're with Mary at the tomb and just acknowledging that we really need the risen Lord, that there's so much we can't do on our own, on our own power, our own steam, but we need his presence, his power in our lives. but we won't really fully have that. Or let's put it this way, we will have that sense of Christ's presence and that help and power in our lives in as much as we are willing to look into the darkness of the tombs in our lives. And then we can see the risen Lord. And then I think we can have this experience that 
Thomas Merton, a Trappist monk of the Abbey of Gethsemane in Kentucky wrote in his book, He Is Risen. I quoted this a few days ago in daily mass, but this is just for me something I go back to often to remind myself. He says, true encounter with Christ. Before I go on, true encounter with Christ can only happen if we're being true with ourselves, with the Lord. True encounter with Christ liberates something in us, a power we did not know we had, a hope, a capacity for life, a resilience, an ability to bounce back when we thought we were completely defeated, a capacity to grow and change, a power of, created transformation, of creative transformation true encounter with Christ. Mary of Magdala, thank you for helping us to see the way to the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, the Christ. The resurrection and life. St. Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Today on this Easter morning, we will do as we did last night at the Easter Vigil, and we'll renew our baptismal promises as our creed this morning. Dear sisters and brothers, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I, I do. do. And all his works? I, I do. do. And all his empty show? I, I do. do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I, I do. do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I, I do. do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. As we rejoice in the good news of the resurrection, may we pray with trust and hope for the many needs of our world, our church, our community, and our families. For Pope Francis, as he leads the church toward greater transparency and accountability, for a church that is of and for the poor, for increased opportunities for lay leaders who seek justice and equality, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who have left the church or live on her margins, for seekers and for those newly baptized and received into the Catholic Christian faith, for those who have not heard the good news, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the new life that springs forth during this season, for faithful stewardship 
to protect the Earth's beauty and resources, for gratitude for the work of farmers and farm laborers, for safety and fair wages for those who harvest, prepare, and transport our food. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For hearts of compassion to serve the hungry, the thirsty, the homeless, and the imprisoned, for those most affected by the pandemic, for those who mourn, for first responders, healthcare workers, and all citizens to have the courage and wisdom to do their parts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the strength to die to ourselves and rise to new life this Easter season. For the faithful's generosity with their time, talent, and treasure, so as to give greater service to the church unto the glory of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, for all who are approaching death, may the darkness of the tomb give way to the light of hope in the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Savior, hear these and all our heartfelt prayers. May our Easter rejoicing fill the world with love, joy, and peace that is rooted in you, who are Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your whole Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith is, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread and in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the, pl of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and countly countenance, kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants. Who have gone before you with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Fel Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory, glory are, are yours, yours now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer a COVID-19 appropriate <laughs> sign of peace and wishes for Easter. Peace, peace be with, be you, with Father. you, Father. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.
Lamb of God, you You take take away away the the sins of the world. Have Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you You take take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am am not worthy worthy that that you should enter under my roof, but but only only say say the word and my my soul soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, happy Easter from Father Tim and me and from our crew here this morning. Mm -hmm. Um, Hope you have a blessed day and Easter season. Uh, Want to thank people who are taking the extra effort to continue to support the parishes, their parishes in Christ the King Catholic community. Um, So thank you for that and I ask you to continue to do so. We have to pay our bills and so forth, but we know some of you are also facing uh, difficult times. So if all of us do what we can do, um, we will be, we'll be fine. The Lord uh, is blessing us each day. Um, also, there's a special collection this weekend. Uh, annually, we take up a collection for the retired <coughs> and infirm priests of the Diocese of Sioux City. Um, it's a very helpful collection to support our retired and infirm priests, priests dealing with uh, health issues of whatever kind. So thank you for considering and supporting um, that in prayer and also with whatever gift you're able to do. Father, we're singing number what? 182, is that right? 182, Christ is risen, I believe.
Yes. Yes, Christ has risen. Oh, that's the title of the song. Yes, yeah, that's the title of the song. (laughs) Jesus is risen, not Christ. Jesus, one and the same. Now, I guess one of the little tombs I have to visit is doing the Eucharistic prayer number one more often because (laughs) I was not trying to do it like, a what? Why is he doing Mary and Mother of God one more time? (laughs) Um, uh, Yeah, it's just confusing. We'll just leave it at that. So, (laughs) the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Jesus is risen, let us sing. Praise to the ever-living King. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise Him in song, ye seraphim. Praise Him with joy, ye cherubim. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. On this most holy day of days, let us together sing his praise. Alleluia, alleluia. Raise joyful voices to the sky. Sing out, ye heavens, in reply. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. To God the Father let us sing, to God the Son our risen King. Alleluia, alleluia. And equally let us adore thy Holy Spirit evermore. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.